Hi everyone, welcome to Introduction to Programming with Python. This is lecture 4. In this lecture, I'll talk about variable assignment and how to find variable type, what is dynamic typing, some basic operators in Python, and how to deal with user input in Python. So let's quickly go to Spider to get started. Now variables are like storage placeholders for texts and numbers in Python. So how to create and assign a variable? Let me begin. We're talking about variable assignment. So let's assume that A is some variable that should take the value 5. The assignment operator that is used in Python is nothing but this equal to sign. So A equals 5 means that I'm assigning the value 5 to the variable A. And then I can print this and see what value A has or A holds. I assigned the value A equals 5 to a variable named A and then I want to print that A. As you can see on the right right hand side the bottom corner or the bottom box on the screen if I print A the output is 5. Why? Because A holds the value 5. Now I can use these variables to, to do multiple mathematical or arithmetic operations for example I can add these objects so these are referred to as objects in Python so what if I want to add a plus a let's see as you can see I get the value 10 now let's try reassignment let me comment that so that I if I assign some other value to the same variable a, what happens? a equals 20. So I'm assigning the value 20 to a now. And then let me print a. Now as you can see the value that the output that I get out of printing a is now 20. It's no more 5. So this is called reassignment. I can reassign the same variable multiple times and, the, and it takes the value that is most recently assigned to it. I can also use the same variable, I can like redefine the same variable, I'll show you how, using redefinition and how that happens is I can assign a to the same variable a. Let's do that. So logically speaking here the value of a should be updated as the sum of a and a and that should be, let's see. 40. Why? Because initially A had the value 20 and I added another A to it and I again reassigned the variable A with that value and then when I print that value I should get 40 which is the case here. Right? So this was about defining and redefining variables. Uh, one thought when, when deciding about variables in your programs is that we should use object names to keep better track of what's going on in your code. So for example, if you're trying to calculate simple interests, it's good to name your variables things like my income or tax rate, etc. So that's that's easy to keep track of, of stuff. Okay, so moving on, I also wanted to talk about dynamic typing. Dynamic typing. Let me assume that I have a variable b and I assign it some value. Let's say let's create this variable. Let me create the variable. Now, what happens if I assign this variable again with some string value? New. I created another value for this variable called b and assign this value to that b. Now, this is a string, and we'll talk about strings in detail in the subsequent lectures. Now, let me see what value does this hold. By now it should actually be clear to you that it should hold the most recent value and that's what dynamic typing is all about. So as you can see, the value that b holds right now is new and not 10. So the variable, in any variable in Python takes the most recent value that you assign to it. So that's what dynamic typing means. Other ways of reassignment that we would, off, we, we, we would be using in our 
lot of exercises as we move further. Let's say again, I have a variable a equals 5. There are other methods of reassigning. So what if I want to keep adding something to this variable? So for that, an easier way of doing that is that I want to add a to a. Right? And so instead of writing a equals a plus a, I can simply go and say a plus equals 5. Print a to see the value that I get, and that's 10. So that's another way of writing it. Similarly, you can have the multiplication expression. So for example, I write a times equals 5. What it means is that multiply a to a and assign a with that value. Similarly, this means add a to a and assign this new value to the variable a again. Right? So let me print a again and see it's 50. Right? Because why a had the value 10, right? Here a was 10. And then I wanted it to multiply itself with 5 and again store the same value in a. Okay, so this is, this is another way of writing reassignment operations. Now the other thing that I wanted to talk in this lecture was check variable type. So different variables have different types depending on the value that they are storing in or they are carrying. For example, here it's a numeric value that A is having, so it would likely be an integer or a floating point. It could also be a string or a character. So let's say you are interested in finding the type of a variable. All you have to do in Python is simply type type and then the name of the variable. So it will give you that it is an integer, right? As you can see, A is holding the value not 5. Now A has the value 50 and that's an integer. Again, I would reassign a with some value and check the type and let's see what the type is now. So this is float. Why? Because there is a decimal involved. So this is how we check variable type. The last thing that I wanted to cover in this lecture was dealing with user input. What if you want your program to get some input from the user while your program is running? So how do you get that? Let me ask the user for some value, print, and put your age, let's say. This is what you want to ask the user. Right? So I, I just like say print and put your age. And then let there be a variable b that will take that input. So this is the simplest way of taking user input. Simply say input and then braces. And then whatever value the user gives you would be stored in b. Right? So let me run this. Similarly, you can have another variable that's a equals input and that's also fine. I mean, you don't have to. And then finally, I want to print that age. So age is and then simply whatever the user gave me. Right? So when it's asking me the age, let's say I input 30 and then I can run this line. So as you can see on the right hand corner, age is 30. Why? Because this B variable took some input and I can output it in any way I like. So this is one very basic or simple way of taking user input. And the other thing I wanted to talk about today was a couple of operators. So operators are nothing but a means of, of comparing variables. So some of the basic operators that I'll be talking about are the equal to. So let's say I have a variable a equals 5, b equals 10, and I want to check. So, so th this is something that I'm assigning explicitly, but sometimes you don't know the values that some variables are holding. And I still want to check if these variables are equal or not. So one quick way of doing that is this double equal to sign that's called the that kind of that, that's an operator that checks whether two variables are equal or not. So it will return a boolean which means a true or a false value. 
so ideally speaking in this in this scenario it should return a false so let's see so yes it returns a false because we know that a is not equal to b right what if so there is an operator for not equal to as well let's do that so that should be true yeah because a is actually not equal to b and so the output that we get is b so these are the two operators that we'll be using a lot and i'll also talk about the less than equal to and greater than equal to operators but not in this lecture in in some of the subsequent lectures when we go into the details of operators but for this lecture which is lecture 4 uh, let's stop now and then see you in the next lecture